Greetings and welcome back to New York City, specifically Long Island City, where I am cat sitting. There are cats in this apartment over there somewhere. I'm trying to force them to eat. They are not cooperating. But let's, uh, I thought I would give it a go, have a shot at essentially rehashing the forthcoming Blue Note classic vinyl series titles that run from May through December of this year. Now, I have to say up front, it leaves kind of a bad taste in my mouth to be rehashing a press release because I don't want to be a shill. I don't want to be a mouthpiece for a record label. I don't care who they are. Um, so I haven't really done one of these before because the other guys do it and probably do it better than me. Chris Brown is great at doing these kind of things. Sid Schwartz has done a great sub stack on these, but um, we all have different takes on what we like. So there might be things I like or know more about than those guys don't know about. But uh, you know, I was a journalist for 30 years. I guess I still am a journalist. I've interviewed a lot of people through the years. Branford, Elvin, Stevie, Wayne. Um, so when you get a press release, the last thing you want to do is just rehash it. You want to bring something to it. So I guess that's what we're trying to do. But I don't want to be a shill for a record label. As great as the people at Blue Note are, I've known Jim Carosman for 30 years as well at Blue Note. I just, but I understand people want opinions and maybe a little guidance in what to buy and they want our opinions. So uh, the classic vinyl titles, uh, Curated as it were by Dan Wise and Jim Correctman. But you know who's doing the heavy lifting? It's Joe Harley and Kevin Gray. And as we know, the classic vinyl titles, they're a little less. I think they're like 30 bucks instead of 45 or whatever a tone poet is now. Uh, you don't get the fancy packaging, but you're getting the same basic deal. And I think the idea was they didn't want to repeat what they already did as music matters. So let's start out with. A, a bang, just an explosion on May 17th with Stanley Turrentine and the Three Sounds, Blue Hour, and uh, Hank Mobley Workout. These are two of my favorite records in the Blue Note canon. Now, it's interesting, a few years ago, probably like 10 years ago, or whenever it was, well before there was a Tone Poet series, well before the classic vinyl series was a little spermazoa in Jim Carosman's testicles, and Joe Harley was at AudioQuest, the New York Times did an article on Blue Note and the great records and the not so good records and the writer who did that one piece and was never heard from again called Stanley Turrentine a lightweight. Now Stanley Turrentine is not Wayne Shorter, he's not James Spaulding, he's not John Coltrane, he's not Hank Mobley, but he is most definitely Stanley Turrentine. You know he's he didn't come at this with I'm gonna change the world or I'm the world's greatest composer, but Stanley Turrentine has a sense of energy and grit and soul and drive in his playing that I don't think any of those other guys ever had. I don't care who you're talking about. I mean, they still have yet to release my favorite uh, Stanley Turrentine records or re-release them like Easy Walker, which is maybe my favorite. He made a lot of records, Easy Walker, Hustlin', uh, Joyride, which is amazing, big band Stanley Turrentine. Even the later records like Dearly Beloved, I love those records because Stanley Turrentine knows who he is. And man, he came to play. And he can play a battle like nobody's business. On one of these records, he plays uh, Since I Fell For You, which was a hit in the 1950s, I believe the late 1950s. And I used to have to play that song, not in the 1950s. I wasn't born in the 1950s. But it's a ballad you play it like dances. And I hate that song. But when Stanley Turrentine plays it, man, it's just like a thing of beauty. He had such a beautiful uh, sense of architecture in his playing. And he was a real blower. So and Blue Hour with the three sounds. Um, you know, it's funny because this is the only Stanley Turrentine album that is actually considered really valuable by collectors. Don't know why, we auction it every once in a while at the Jazz Record Center. But with the great three sounds, you are criminally ignored by everyone, including Blue Note. They need to reissue some freaking three sounds records, starting with the first one. Um, but it's great to hear these guys together, and it's got a great cover shot in the corner of Inglewood Cliffs. Hank Mobley Workout. This is the first Hank Mobley record I ever bought, and it is what it says. It's a workout. It is a pugilist match of ultimate tag team bravado. Philly Joe Jones, Paul Chambers, I believe, one of the greatest records you'll ever hear with Grant Green on it. You know, Grant Green rises to whatever the occasion is on other people's records more than he does his own. In my feeling, there's the cat. I'm trying to get him to eat. But a workout just blisters top to bottom. You know, uh, later in his career, he wrote very sophisticated arrangements, uh, more ensemble playing with other horn players. But I like the early, just like I like the early Lee Morgan, Indeed, Candy, uh, 
Lee Morgan Volume 3. I like the early Hank Mobley, uh, which are essentially blowing sessions. But that's a really great one to get. June 2nd, Aaron Parks and Jason Moran. I don't know Aaron Parks playing at all. But Jason Moran is a brilliant piano player. I think he sort of comes out of the Andrew Hill School. I think it's really important that we support these guys. You know, I've been listening to a lot more contemporary, modern jazz, and I'm really loving it. Uh, Sasha Berliner, some amazing players on JMI. There's a lot of great young musicians out there. Emmanuel Wilkins, those records are the ultimate in spiritual jazz as far as I'm concerned. So we really need to support those guys. And I'm sure you can get a, a sound file on here these in advance. July 19th, Thad Jones, the magnificent Thad Jones, and Clifford Jordan Cliffcraft. Clifford Jordan Cliffcraft. This is another instance of one record from an amazing musician. One record and he's out the door. But this is a great record. Another Philly Joe Jones record, I believe. Great compositions. Clifford Jordan obviously had a big career ahead of him to come uh, with his uh, Strata East records. And this is an early indication of his sophistication, his compositional skill, and, and the beauty of his playing. A great record. Thad Jones, the magnificent Thad Jones, I believe this is a 1500 series record. Very hard to find in any situation. And it is like Thad Jones is a really sophisticated, beautiful player. You heard of that in the later Thad Jones, Mel, Mel Lewis Big Band Orchestra records. And, uh, you know, it's just a beautiful record top to bottom. It's really old school, comes out of an older school. It's not hard bop. It's more orchestral in a way, but definitely a must have. September 9th, oh, I'm sorry, August 16th, Wayne Shorter Juju and Lee Morgan Gigolo. Well, 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 Wayne Shorter Juju. Now, I feel like you should buy every Wayne Shorter record because they're all little masterpieces. My favorite is his first one on Blue Note, Night Dreamer. But Juju was also very, very popular. It's funny, um, when I started collecting jazz records in the 1970s, in the horse and buggy days when we had to bring ice up with a pick and we'd start the fire and we'd blow on the fire and it would turn the record players. Um, back in the 70s, uh, Juju was the record you most commonly found in Speak No Evil, not Adam's Apple or Night Dreamer. Uh, it's kind of strange. But Juju is a great classic uh, Wayne Shorter record with John Coltrane's rhythm section. I know it's Elvin at least. No brainer. Great record. Uh, September 20th, Yutta Hip. And this, you know, there's the Yutta Hip on Blue Note with Zoot Sims. Those are pretty good. But the Yutta Hip trios without anybody else, these are great records. She was such a perfect musician. Just perfect touch, great song selections. I think she wrote a couple of you know, her own songs, but you know, these are perfect jazz trio records. Classic, when you think of a jazz trio, you got Hank Jones, you got Yutta Hip, you got Tommy Flanagan, you know, uh, Walter Davis Jr. to some degree, in the modern times, Kenny Barron, of course. But she's the only female, I guess with Marilyn, but Marilyn along with Miriam and Partland, I don't know if Dinah Washington, I mean, uh, not Dinah Washington, her name escapes me, the really brilliant composer, uh, black composer. Anyway, I don't think she played trio, but uh, these are beautiful trio records. They're very, very subtle. Um, you know, they're just, they're beautiful. They're beautiful trio records. You should have a Yada Hip record in your collection. This is a strange one. Three Sounds at the It Club. Now the Three Sounds had so many great records and they put, they're putting out Three Sounds at the It Club. Hello, what the f what? It doesn't make any sense to me at all. I'm not at home, so I can't hold up all my Three Sounds records. But they're hard to find. When you do find, they're well played because they're great records, because they boogie, they're very natural, they're very effervescent. They're fun records. And they're putting out at the It Club. Don't get that at all. Uh, October 18th, these two are also wonderful, no-brainer records. Art Blakey, The Night, Night in Tunisia. You know, this is one of the top five of Art Blakey's records. Monin, Buhuana's Delight, um, Orgy and Rhythm. You know, he has a handful that are mosaic, that are so great. Uh, earlier today, I was actually listening to his two Impulse releases that have not been reissued. Those are fantastic records. Um, and this is one of those, Night Tunisia. I believe the front line is Lee Morgan, Wayne Shorter. Maybe it's Jimmy Merritt on bass. It's a no-brainer. If you don't have it, you want to get some Lee Morgan, that's a wonderful place to start. And I'm so glad they're doing Donald Byrd, the Royal Flush, or just Royal Flush. All those early 
uh, Donald Bird Records. They're all great. Uh, Blackjack, um, off, to, off to the Races. You know, Lee played these really beautiful solos, uh, and Freddie Hubbard was much more aggressive. Freddie Hubbard doesn't seem to get a lot of love these days, but in a way, he was a much more skilled trumpeter, very aggressive, very powerful. Um, but Donald Byrd was more methodical in a way and very sophisticated in his own way. And he, he wrote great tunes. I think Byrd wrote better tunes than, than Lee Morgan did. But anyway, Royal Flush, no brainer. Great one to get. November 15th, Dexter Gordon getting around. I'm not the world's biggest Dexter Gordon fan. Uh, he has a big, booming, beautiful tone. He's very laid back. He's easy to like. And getting around is one of his classic blue notes. Duke Pearson Wahoo, one of the great Duke Pearson records. You know, you can't go wrong with Duke. He's a, uh, he was a producer of Blue Note, talent scout. And Wahoo, and the one that has uh, Big Bertha, it's right after it. It's funny because Duke kind of knocks back and forth between Atlantic and Blue Note. In 1966, he did a record called Honey Buns, Tom Dow production. Uh, 66 also Prairie Dog. These both have kind of weird covers. 1968 on Blue Note, The Right Touch. Introducing Pearson, Big Band in 68, The Phantom in 68, Now Hear This in 69, Wahoo in 1964, Oh, Sweet Honeybee, that's my absolute favorite. That's the woman on the cover. That has, that is such a great record. But who is on Wahoo? I have it, I'm not here. Luke Pearson, Donald Byrd, James Spaulding, Joe Henderson, Bob Cranshaw, Mickey Rucker. Oh my God, what a lineup. I mean, you can't go wrong with any of those guys. That's that's a no-brainer. That's a great record to get. And then they closed off the year with Grant Green, Visions, and Lonnie Smith Drive. I wouldn't buy either one of those records. Sorry, just me. Lonnie Smith is one of those organ guys who, for me, is just sort of stuck in time. There's quite a few of those guys who, you know, you, know, you have Larry Young, um, you know, whose who's organ playing is just timeless. His records are timeless. Uh, he actually moved past all of this, starting with Unity and the Mothership. He really stretched the genre. But a lot of Oregon guys were just kind of stuck in 1962. And that's how I, you know, and Lonnie Smith, he's a little bit later, supposed to be a little bit hipper. But those records just don't do anything for me. I'm sorry. And uh, Grant Green Visions, that doesn't do anything for me either. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you like what I'm doing, whether I'm saying, yes, this is great, or I'm complaining, don't buy this. I hope you will like and subscribe what I'm doing. And as I said, you should also check out Chris Brown, his overview of the Blue Note Classic forthcoming records and the great Sid Schwartz at his Substack joint. Check it out.